Welcome to our lecture online. Now in this integral, we have an extra x in the denominator. So how do we deal with that? In this case, I think using partial fractions may do the trick. So what we want to do here is write the quantity or the fraction 1 over x times a plus bx squared. Write it as the sum of two fractions. So we have an a divided by x plus a bx plus c divided by a plus bx squared. And now all we have to do is find out what a, b, and c are, so we can rewrite this as the sum of two fractions instead. Hopefully then both fractions are easily uh, much more easily to be integrated. So what we have here is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So here we have 1 is equal to a times a plus bx squared plus bx plus c multiplied times x. So when we multiply these out, we get the following. We get 1 is equal to aa plus abx squared plus bx squared plus cx. So notice we have a constant on the left side, we have a constant on the right side, we have 1x to the first and 2x to the second terms. So let's go ahead then and say that 1 is going to be equal to a times a, which means a equals 1 over a. That was easy enough. And notice that we have cx or c equals 0 because there's no x term on the left side, which means that c must equal 0. And then we can also say that AB plus B must also equal 0 because those are the two coefficients of the x squared terms. There's no x squared term on the left side, so we write AB plus B equals 0. And we know what A is equal to, so we can say that B is equal to minus A times B. And then substitute 1 over A for A, so we have B is equal to minus B over A. So now that we know what a and b are equal to, and c as well, because c is equal to 0. So we can now go ahead and substitute a, c, and b into our two fractions to see what we get. So over here, this is going to be equal to the integral of a over x. Now a is 1 over a, which can be pulled out of side integral sign, so we have 1 over a times dx over x minus, because we have a minus b over a here, so the b becomes b over a, so and the c is 0, so we can pull out the b over a out of the integral sign, times the integral of x divided by a plus bx squared times dx. Okay, now what we need here is we have an a plus bx squared in the denominator and an x dx in the numerator. We really need a 2b x dx. We already have a b here, so I can take this b and move it inside the integral sign. But we also need a 2 in the numerator, so we need a 2 here. So now we have a 2b x dx, which is the proper differential of the denominator. Of course, when I multiply the numerator by 2, I have to multiply the denominator by 2 as well. Okay, so now we can go ahead and integrate those two integrals to see what we get. So this becomes equal to 1 over a times the natural log of x minus 1 over 2a times the natural log of a plus bx squared plus a constant of integration. Now we can probably combine these two except here we have a 1 over 2a and there we have a 1 over a. So what I could do is I could divide and multiply this by 2, so multiply this by 2, and multiply this by 2, and take the 2 here and write it as an exponent. So this can now be written as 1 over 2a times the natural log of x squared minus 1 over 2a plus a constant of integration. And now that I have the same constants here, I can factor out a constant, and this can be written as 1 over 2a times the natural log of x squared divided by a plus bx squared plus a constant of integration. Yeah, right, that a little bit bigger here. And so this now becomes the result of that particular integral.
So again, using partial fractions, it's not so bad. And that's how it's done.